Okay, am I back yet? 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 Yeah, I'm back. Okay, cool. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, cool. So apologies for the delay. As you guys saw there, Joy Koi says, <clears throat> no more Joy Koi for us going forward. So let's just read over some coverage here. I want to see what people have been saying about Joy Koi and this horrendous, horrendous performance that he did. So let's see. He responded, actually. Didn't he respond somewhere? Where did he respond? He responded here. He responded. Let's see what he said about the response. What did Joy Koi say about his actual performance on stage? I'm curious to hear what he said. What did this guy say? What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? You made us Filipino so proud oh, tonight. Oh, I love you. You make me proud Thank tonight. You. You know, no, this is about you. I had, I had to drop my Halkita at the end. Yeah, did you hear me say that? Yes. I had to say it. it was kind I of want everybody to know. I'm like, I'm going to still drop some Filipino in this. In this night tonight, and you did we're it. saying Mahal Kita, saying. and I want the world to Google it, like Google that. And not for nothing, big night for AAPI, right? Come on, all day, you know what I mean? That's what it is. It's not just one. Yeah. It's it's like for all of us. Real quick, did you see Taylor's reaction to your joke oh, this morning? Oh, man. <laughs> what would you think? Uh, it, was, I, it was cute. I was just saying, it was cute. I was just saying, it's just less cutaways, you know what I mean? That's yeah. all. You know, maybe she was just thirsty. She needed oh, to take a drink of the champagne. Oh, man. I love you, man. Thank you so much. Okay, no idea what happened there. Let's see what he said backlash-wise. He was happy about that. Okay, let's see. He responded to the backlash. What did he say? What did he say? Exactly, you failed for all of us. <laughs> exactly. Joy Coy responds to the backlash. The stand-up comedian and actor has spoken out about his unpopular performance, calling it an off night. <laughs> Isn't it funny? All these comedians that are in, all of these comedians. Oh, Jesus, that footballer died. How did he die? Wow. R.I.P. to Grimsby Town mourns heartbreaking death of footballer. Fuck, R.I.P. Um, isn't it fucking ironic that all these comedians that are endorsed by Rogan have such disasters? Didn't Sebastian Maniscalco do the same thing? He presented like an MTV thing, didn't he? And again, I love Sebastian, but I think he failed on that one too. Anytime these guys actually get a big time gig, they talk about being anti-industry and about the industry doesn't give them any respect and they're way too popular and all this sort of shit. Whenever they get given a big chance on the big stage, under the big lights, they always crumble. Don't, don't you find that funny? All these guys who think they're like the best comedians in the world, they think they're the Navy Seals of comedians, they're the last nine of defense, right? <laughs> 1,000 strong. When they get a chance to actually perform on the biggest stage there is in front of normies, in front of the general public, they all fucking fail. Golden Globe says, I feel bad. Let's see what he said here. Comedian Joy Koi has responded to the backlash over his performances over the host of the Golden Globes. The last minute pick of the role received a negative react. Okay, so he wasn't last minute pick. So who dropped out then? I want to know who dropped out. Who dropped out for Joy Koi to get the gig? Who said no? Last minute, who cancelled? Um, the and reportedly in the room w with an unnamed prominent director referring to it as a disaster. Wow, the last minute pick for the role received a negative reaction online and reportedly in the room with an unnamed director referring to it as a disaster. A Vanity Fair, um, Richard Lawson calling his opening monologue a horrid, sophomoric mishmash of lazy jokes. Oh my god, that is brutal. A horrid, sophomoric mishmash of lazy jokes. Let's hear the fucking AI say it. A horrid, sophomoric mishmash of lazy jokes. Oof. One more time, AI. One more time. A horrid, sophomoric mishmash of lazy jokes. Oof. Koi, known as a stand-up comedian and actor, appeared on ABC's GMA, um, What You Need to Know, and addressed the response. I had fun. Okay, let's, let's see what you said here. <laughs> Let's do the AI. <laughs> yeah, right, you had fun. I had fun, he said. You know, it was a moment that I'll always remember. It's a tough room. It was a hard job. I'm not going to lie. I'd be lying if I said it doesn't hurt. Hosting is just a tough gig. Yes, I'm a stand-up comic, but that hosting position, it's a different style. I kind of went style. in and did the writer's thing. We had 10 days to write this monologue. It was a crash course. I feel bad, but I got to still say I loved what I did. 
you had 10 days to write it and that's the best you could come up with 10 days is a lot of time am i not mistaken again these guys don't work regular jobs they don't work a regular nine to five some of them have nannies i think joy has like an, a, a teenage son so he doesn't need a nanny to look after him you don't have any other responsibilities really and if it's 10 days to write a fucking opening monologue for the golden globes your family needs to take a back seat it's not that difficult 10 days and this is what you write and then he's trying to say look what he says here to fucking ob you know ob like kind of push away himself from blame Yes, I'm a stand-up comic, comic, but that hosting position is a different style. I thought funny's funny. Don't these guys say funny's funny? If funny's funny, you should be able to host a fucking bar mitzvah. You should be able to host a kid's party at McDonald's. You should be able to host or give a speech at a fucking funeral and make people laugh. If you're funny like you say you are, it doesn't matter what scenario you're in, what setting, you should be able to make people's fucking ribs split. But obviously, this is a different style. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Koi's jokes range from commenting on Saltburn star Barry Keon's on-screen nudity, where's your penis seated, or Zempic, the color purple is what happens when you butt, when you, what, when you, what, the color purple is what happens to your butt when you take Ozempic. The length of the Oppenheimer, I just have one complaint, it needed another an hour, and Barbie based on plastic doll with big boobs. <laughs> <laughs> honestly you have people at work you have a guy now at work at the moment in your fucking lunchroom you have a guy that you work with or somebody that you know that's funnier than joy coy I, I i i promise you most of the regular people that we all know are way more funnier than fucking rogan's friends or the 1000 strong of these comedians these guys are so overrated in it they're so fucking shit 10 days to write jokes and you you make that he also made a joke about Taylor Swift, nominated for cinematic and box office achievement for her era's tour, dating the Kansas Chief um, tight end Travis Kelsey. As you know, we came on after the football doubleheader. He said, the big difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL on the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift, I swear. To be fair, the Taylor Swift joke was quite good in that it was insulting and quite obviously a telling of real life because people are annoyed that she keeps getting shown on the fucking screen every time um you know travis kelsey's team plays um but it still didn't land where you know it's on you know, on paper it's actually a good joke but when he said it it didn't come across you know it didn't come across well but it's actually a good joke <clears throat> It led to an instant unimpressed reaction from the star, which quickly spread online. When asked about the moments during the show, he regretted it and said, I think, well, I, I, he regretted it. Really? He regretted he, oh, you can't regret the fucking joke, you idiot. When asked about moments during the show, he regretted. He said, I think it was when Taylor um, was one, was just a little flat. Sorry, I think the Taylor one was just a little flat. It was a weird joke, I guess. But it was more of an NFL. I was trying to make fun of the N. <laughs> he has to explain his jokes. Oh my God, you're drowning. I was trying to make fun of the NFL using cutaways and how the Globes um, didn't have to do that. So it was more of a jab towards the NFL. But it just didn't come out that way. <laughs> He's scared of Taylor. Taylor Swift has got shooters. <laughs> He's afraid of the Taylor Swift goons. He's afraid of the Swifties. He doesn't want the Swift... Oh, he's, he's mentions, his comments must be littered with Swifties, isn't it? The Swifties are fucking destroying Joy Coy's mentions and comments. <laughs> Taylor Swift, Swift, Taylor Swift, Swifties, her shooters are fucking ready to crash out on her, man. They're ready to crash out. Um, Coy summarized it as a one, as an off night and he fell a bit short, but he remained proud. Of course, how can he be proud of that? Like... I wanted to give it more. I wanted to give it a bit more of me. You're never coming back. This year's ceremony was dominated by the winds of. <laughs> I wanted to give it more. Like what? <laughs> um. Another one. Jesus Christ, bro! He got destroyed, didn't it? Guy Lambert. Golden Globes Awards ceremony, muted response to the host. Who did he, I want to hear who he, who he replaced. Comic Joy Koi, a first time presenter at the Globes, struggled to get his opening monologue off the ground as BuzzFeed David Mack joked. Koi's monologue, it was in tribute to Oppen. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's get the AI to read this. As BuzzFeed David Mack joked, Kawhi's monologue was, in a tribute to Oppenheimer, a bomb. <laughs> That's actually a good joke. That's actually a better joke than what Joey Coy read. There's a tribute to Oppenheimer, a bomb. Coy himself seemed to acknowledge some of the jokes weren't catching fire. At one point, he told the audience, I got this gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Here's a section of his one liners. When the Globes called me. No, let, let's just get let AI read it. Fuck it. When the Globes called me and asked if I wanted to host, I jumped at the chance. Then they asked me if I saw the movies and TV shows, and I said yes. I lied. Yeah, that was unnecessary. Could you just say. When the Globes called me to ask me to host, I jumped at the chance to lie, like everyone else does in here. No, is it? Does that hit better or not? It doesn't. That's a bit flat too. When the when when the Golden Globes called me to host, um, I'm not gonna lie. I assume they meant to serve drinks, because you know most of the people in here that are serving you drinks kind of look like me. You know, some people on those, like some sort of like oh look all the help is fucking filipino or something joke that could have worked maybe right when they asked me to host i thought they meant like you know holding a plate holding a plate full of fucking champagne or something i don't know i don't know i don't know but it's just not like how could you can you imagine you have writers that would make this joke that's the thing that's surprising to me they had 10 days and a writer came up with this joke <sighs> 10 days and more humans like ri another one the minute i signed the contract i started to binge watch everything while my family were out there clanking champagne glasses and ringing in the new year i was watching oppenheimer i just have one complaint it needed another hour <laughs> that's so dated too isn't it? i feel like oppenheimer like how long the movie jokes are too dated another one Oppenheimer answered a question that's been on my mind for years. Yes, scientists who get laid, as long as they look like Cillian Murphy. Another one. Oh, we heard that one already. Oh, okay, this is, this is a succession one. Succession has nine nominations. A great series about a rich, white dysfunctional family, all scheming. Oh no, that's the crown. Sorry. Yeah, to be fair, all the like the racial joke things are just a bit dead in it. Like you know, it's like white people bad, immigrant people work hard. My mum sounds like this. That that DB. Like it's like, come on, bro. Really? Is this a joke you're gonna do? Like <laughs> another one. How great was Imelda Staunton in The Crown? Her portrayal was so great. Prince Harry called her and asked her for money. Boo. Anyway, Joy Coy fucking fell flat. Um, feel sorry for him. Um, but yeah, he 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 follows a long line of stand-up comedians who, when they get given a shot at actually presenting one of these shows, right? These big fucking shows, they always fall fucking flat. Look at this other one, at article from the Atlantic. It's actually really funny how much how often this happens to big LA stand-up comedians with podcasts and shit who think they're really funny. They get on the big stage and they fucking flop. Um, was what was Joy Coy thinking? Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's getting destroyed everywhere. Here are some of the things I saw while running into last night's Golden Globes that made me laugh harder than anything the ceremony host, the comedian Joy Coy, said on stage. This video of Oppenheimer Cillian Murphy looking lost on a red carpet, the moment the best star Ayo Idiberi remembered to acknowledge her real family also after thanking her castmates this tweet. Which is to say, well, Coy bombed. His opening monologue began poorly. We have dreamt of this moment, he declared, enthusiastically to silent apparent disagreement and only got worse. Like any award show host, Coy shouted out individual nominees, but practically every joke fell to land, mostly because the punchlines were dated or obvious. He poked fun at the eventual um, best drama winner Oppenheimer three-hour runtime, claiming that it would finish in 20, 2025 for Barbie, which later... 
um, won the new prize in the cinematic universe. He admitted that he didn't know the expected movie to be a plastic doll, big boobs. He made a quip about Meryl Streep winning all the time, who hasn't, and then approps, um, apropos of nothing, asks her Wakanda forever pose from the black man. <laughs> Did he do that? I didn't see that. He then made a quip about Meryl Streep, and apropos of nothing, he asks her to do the Wakanda forever pose. <laughs> Oh, that's actually quite funny. <laughs> he asks Mel Streep to do the Wakanda Forever pose. Oh, I don't have the rest of it. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Honestly, hold on. Let me see if I, what's it? It's Hawk Guy IS. Oh my god. That was fucking hilarious if true. Oh, <laughs> Okay, cool. Let's see if we can read it here in full. Oh, big up Joy Koi. I feel for you, mate. Another one. By the end of the set, Koi sounded um, indignant, seemingly picking up on how the little the crowd was vibing on his comedy. He says, yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. I wrote some of these and they're the ones that you're laughing at. Hosting a Hollywood award show isn't always a disaster, but Koi's dreadful performance proved the thanklessness of the job. And given his last hiring, he was especially um, unsuited for the task. But the night continued and Koi dispensed with the gags as he introduced presenters. His diminished time on stage demonstrated just how unnecessary hosts are. Consider the, f the few benefits of stepping on stage before an audience of mostly famous people on track to win a prestigious award. Sure, the exposure and however much of a host gets paid for the gig, but the MC never walks away with a trophy. Rather, such an entertainer must toe the fine line between sucking up to those big fetid, um, being fetid or being the kind of ribbing that will get you enough laughter dressed on the telecast. This is untrue. Just do the fucking Ricky Gervais shit and just shit on them. This guy doesn't like comedy, but I think it's really funny when you actually go on stage and you're the host and you rip into them. Like you call out the hypocrisy of it. You make fun of it. Like you actually trash them. That's actually way funnier because it's like you're not even performing for the room. You're performing for the people watching on TV. That's actually way funnier. Like you don't care about what the people inside the room think. You're not trying to be there. Because I felt like a little bit of that set felt a little bit like Joy Coy was trying to be their friend. He wanted them to like like him. But actually performing for the TV audience might have done him better, you know, just ripping into them and kind of calling out the nonsense of this whole affair. You know, I'll, I'm surprised that he didn't do some jokes about here we are in this fucking gala and, you know, kids are getting blown up like some sort of like Gaza, you know, look at the hypocrisy of this sort of shit. You know, how important is this award when some kid's arm is getting blown off? You know what I mean, in a fucking high school somewhere, those type of, you know, observations and jokes would actually run really well um, as opposed to all this sort of shit, you know? Um, and then there's a humor. A host also has like a stand up comedy that like Koi doesn't normally deliver a set that's close to their usual style. They must compromise their comedy to do the job and um, because they're talking exclusively about projects and people being honored. These are exceptions. Gerald Carmichael at last year's Golden Globes came to mind because he was more of a tit um, but more often than not, the host is expected to muse um, those before him and keep viewers hooked. No, he's not. This person doesn't know comedy. You're not meant to, you know, it's a fucking Golden Globes. These guys are getting already sucked off because of the awards if anything um actually ripping into them is actually the best way to go i think this person just doesn't like comedy um it's telling the gobes um struggle to land a host until the last minute um more than a week so no one dropped out they just struggled to get a host so maybe it's a, maybe it is actually a thankless job nobody actually wanted to take the job until a week ago that's fucking wild it's telling that the Globe struggled to land a host until a, mi a little more than a week ago that other shows have gone back to the same host over and over again. The Oscars, despite trying a few years, Sand's host will be emceed by Jimmy Kimmel for the fourth time in March. The Grammys will be fine, Gerald no Trevor Noah on stage, and that's for the fourth time later this month, blah, 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 blah. In many ways, Joy Co Coy was doomed to fail. As a comic who doesn't anchor a late night show, He's not the face or the name most viewers recognize and making an excellent first impression on those watching at home and before the room. He's never emceed and makes an intimidating challenge. Okay. To be fair, I'm not surprised it went bad, to be honest. Like I said, I'm surprised he even got the gig. I'm not going to lie. Um, he's not that famous, to be honest. Um, 
Perhaps the biggest mistake Coy was accepting such a relevant job in the first place. I want to bring my style to the globe, she said. Of course, I'm going to have fun, but most importantly, I want to make sure everyone's happy. As Coy learned on Sunday, that's impossible to do at award show unless you're a trophy. Yeah, fucking hell. Fucking hell. Joy Coy got fucking skewered. Absolutely skewered, man. Hilarious to see, to be fair. Hilarious. It's going to take a while for him to recover from that one, I'm, I'm sure. It's going to take a while for him to fucking recover from that one. But hey. No. Nope. That's the game you play, bro. That's the game you play, paid boy.